he, he reaches an age where you're 18, 19, and, and I would reflect with him, Dustin, this is always going to be your story. This is always going to be something that you want to tell because there's somebody else that needs this treatment. And I don't want you to ever forget what we've been through. I want you to ever forget how God has blessed you with life, and I want your life to have an impact on other people's lives. And part of it is certainly, a big part of it is, what, we're, what, what you're gonna do with Dr. Brzezinski. She got a call at some point from the radiologist and the radiologist was um, calling my mom like, Mrs. Russell, why did you miss your appointment with Jessica tonight? You know, she has a radiation appointment. And my mom said, I can't do it, it's awful, I just can't. And he goes, well, Mrs. Russell, me and you both know your daughter Jessica's going to die, so why don't you just do it? going through brain cancer treatments, he'd make friends, and some of them didn't make them. Some of them couldn't get on Dr. Brzezinski's treatment. We'd come to the clinic, we'd talk to them. And he'd say, why am I alive? And they're not. 25-year patient reunion. And we got to hear stories of the very first people that were treated with the, with the medicine that he's created. And we saw and met all these survivors. And, uh, you know, after that night, there was no question in my mind we were in the right spot. Go get glasses, after you get glasses, that they don't work anymore, then you see another specialist and another to finally find out you're sick. And I remember telling my parents that it was okay, I was ready to go to heaven. Francis Patrick Keller, I am a cancer survivor. I've been a cancer survivor for about 27 years. I was diagnosed with cancer at six years old. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad I have all my nieces and nephews. Well, when I came to the United States, I needed to have employment, and I was offered the employment at Baylor College of Medicine, and uh, I had agreement with the professor who employed me that I can spend about 50% of my time continuing the research which I did in Poland, and this was about uh, chemicals, peptides, which have anti-cancer activity. So this was the initial step. Then the second step... At six years old, I was having headaches in the mornings. And we discovered later it was because of improper brain fluid drainage. It would get stuck because of the tumor. When they brought up chemo and radiation to me, they had mentioned that they could cure it, but then I'd go bald. And being the six-year-old I said I, I was, I said, I don't want to go bald. And in hindsight, after being cured, I realized, hey, I'm not bald. I didn't get bald. I informed a number of congressmen and senators about what we have in the treatment of cancer. Many of them are both medical doctors and uh, representatives and senators, and this is up to them. They should force the government to make it available for the people because that's why they are elected to be official. They need to protect the life of their constituents. If they don't do it, well, then let it be. Recognition that this just wasn't my battle or my wife's battle. It was it was it was his battle. He, and he he reaches an age where you're 18, 19, and, and I would reflect with him, Dustin, this is always gonna be your story. This is always gonna be something that you want to tell because there's somebody else that needs this treatment. And I don't want you to ever forget what we've been through. I want you to ever forget. God has blessed you with life, and I want your life to have an impact on other people's lives. And part of it is certainly, a big part of it is what, we're, what, what you're going to do with Dr. Brzezinski. Since I started with $5 when I came to the United States, uh, the cost of the approval of single medication at that time was estimated for $1.4 billion. And this is for the company which owns laboratories, uh, factories, whatever they need to do research. I did not have any of this. I needed to build it from scratch, and I did it. Coming to, coming to the United States and, and pursuing a cancer treatment 
for, for the approval of everyone to use. And again, never giving up has, has paid dividends in my life and the lives of many others. And I called the university, came and all I wanted to do was come back and get my medical records and move on. We had heard about Dr. Brzezinski, we had done some research, we weren't convinced that's where we were going yet, but I knew what they were offering only offered uh, more, more heartache, more sickness for Dustin. The end result was the same. He wasn't gonna make it. The only thing I have to say is, is thank you and I can, I can never express my gratitude enough for what Dr. Brzezinski's done for, for myself, for Roy, and numerous others and, and and the trickle down effect is my family and my kids and numerous people have been affected through through this courageous man <laughs> such treatments should be approved immediately and made available to american people for instance if there is at least 10 patients who were cured in uh, terminal uh, brain tumor patients in phase two trials. I think the treatment should be immediately approved by the FDA. Because I want our story to be told. I want others to know that there's a clinic, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a doctor who's, who's curing incurable brain cancers. The feeling that they had once they found out about Brzezinski, and uh, I'm, I'm just really glad that they did because I wouldn't be here right now. My inspiration was my dad, and he's a retired fire captain, and uh, I wanted to follow in his footsteps, but obviously with my disability, I could not do that. So every time, every time that truck goes by my house, I want to be on it. My parents were left with a couple options. Um, take me home and let me die of the cancer or put me on this treatment that, um, in, in reading through the consent form, they realized would, would leave me, um, again, thinking about radiating a child's brain, not just the tumors radiated, the entire brain would be radiated. So this would leave me blind, deaf, unable to speak, um, the chemotherapy regimen they wanted to give me, according to the consent form, would attack my liver, my kidneys, it could lead to leukemia, uh, other various forms of cancer. And my, my parents took this home, they read it, and they thought, we can't do this to our two-year-old. If, if God made him handicapped, we would accept that. But we're, up until I was diagnosed with cancer, I was running and, and, and it was a normal kid. The evidence, you haven't given any science, you haven't given any data. I understand all the side effects because I've studied it and I've looked at it. This is, this is a devastating treatment without any, without any promise. And um, they kept changing the statistics and trying to convince me that this is a treatment I should go with. And I said, no, we're not, we're not going to do this treatment. We had asked them, uh, I, I've learned a lot, but we had asked them about Dr. Brzezinski. In hindsight, they, I should have known they, won't be, they wouldn't be interested in something outside of what, uh, what they were offering. And uh, they could see they weren't going to convince me. My mind was made up. That's when they told me that we can take legal action. If you deny treatment, we can take legal action. Their exact words were, the doctors take precedence over parents in medical matters. Or, or a government agency that says, trust us. What you're doing is you're is, is you're, you're 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 dumbing down the American people because all we got to do is trust that agency. Nobody's thinking for themselves anymore. Uh, lo and behold, I uh, I was diagnosed August 12th of 1998, and they put me on this treatment in October, so that I would have been about three months old, I believe, roughly. And um, yeah, but, I mean, even by December, there was already significant shrinkage of my tumor, and that would have put me at six months. And so by September of 99. Um, overall, I had about uh, over 80% um, of inactive scar tissue. And now, even to this day, just a little bit of a, a slight mobility with my right arm and my right leg. 25 year reunion and uh, cancer life saved. And the warmth and the, the connections. Well, I talked to you on the phone. I asked you about Dr. Brzezinski. And, and to, to know that Dr. Brzezinski persevered 
I, I believe he inspired all of us that this, there's something greater than ourselves here. And we opened our phone, phone up. We told people call. We put some media stories out there. I'm a reserved, quiet Finlander, but I'm willing to talk. I'm willing to take phone calls. I'm willing to do media interviews because this is, this is more important than, 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 than uh, uh, my, myself. There's, there's, there's other families and other people that are hurting. Traveled. I, I live a full life, um, and can plan to continue to do so. And none of that would be possible without Dr. Brzezinski. I would not be here. My kids would not be here. He's he's saved my life. I w I would not be alive today without Dr. Brzezinski. Dr. Brzezinski is the key to saving all of us with cancer. Every single one of us. Um, without him, I would be dead. Without the grace of God, I'd be dead. Without my parents and the work they did to keep me. About a year and a half or so later, we switched to pills, and about half a year after that, I was declared in remission, and I've been free of cancer ever since. But I think it was showing me that there is heaven, there is a God, and there is love everywhere, and it's in everything, everyone, and everywhere. I have been a survivor for 29 years and I am blessed to be alive and it's all credit to Dr. Brzezinski. Life is good. It's a gift. Live it.